Well, let's just recap the fire movement. I saw a lot of TikTok videos about this, a lot of Instagram videos throughout the pandemic. Financial independence, retire early. So as soon as you hear about it, it's hard not to deny the appeal. Admittedly, I even tried to calculate, like, how much do I need to retire right now? Am I saving enough? But it is harder to execute than you may think. And you have ad advocates that say you got to uh, save aggressively, invest early to live off of investments in their 40s rather than 60s and 70s, which is why we got our panel today. I want to start with Grant uh, just to get your story. So, Grant, you're a huge advocate of the FIRE movement. In 2015, at age 30, you had saved $1.25 million, but you say that's uh, it is enough to not have to work again. So I'm a little bit curious about that. You've written a book about it. Uh, you advise people on how they can make short-term sacrifices to allow for financial freedom. So, Grant, starting with you, Alex, I promise I'll get to you in just a few questions. But, Grant, can you just right. tell us a little bit more about the, the FIRE movement principles and more specifically the ones that you chose to focus on? Yeah, the FIRE movement is really built around the principle that the higher your savings rate, the higher percentage of your income that you're saving, the faster you'll be able to reach financial independence. So we all know that the average savings rate in the United States tends to hover between 2 and 5 percent, effectively ensuring that most Americans will never be able to retire, or if they're able to retire in their 60s or 70s, they end up having a lot less money than they think. So this is just a simple math problem where if you start saving between 20 and 30 percent of your income, you drastically cut down the time to reach financial independence from, of course, maybe 40 years or never down to 15 to 20 years or less. And if you actually accelerate this even further and save about 50 percent of your income, which is kind of the traditional FIRE recommendation, the average person can reach financial independence in 10 years or less. Of course, that's saving a large percentage of your income. And naturally, you think, where can I save this money? But the idea is that you're making some sacrifices for the next five to seven years of your life, basically to set yourself up for freedom. And so I did this between 2010 and 2015. I saved 82 percent of my income, investing it in a total stock market index fund and effectively saved one point two five million dollars shortly before turning 30. And that money since that time, of course, has continued to grow and compound. And now I have way more money than I ever thought that I would have saved and invested and way more money than I will ever need. Alex, mm -hmm. you retired at 42 thanks to an inheritance, small real estate investments, uh, working definitely long hours, and of course, saving aggressively because that's what we're here to yeah. talk about. Alex, you also did something to reduce your living expenses. You moved, I already, I guess I explained it, you moved to a very friendly expat country that would be Portugal. Can you just talk right. about the decision to do so? Yeah, well, the decision was you know, we came here, we immediately loved it, and we realized that with the ability to spend a little bit less than we were spending in the Washington, D.C. area, we might even be able to come here for a couple of years and the savings would just pay for themselves. So we found, for example, that health insurance costs were a lot lower here than what we were used to paying in the U.S. Uh, school expenses were a lot lower. And back when we moved here, real estate was also reasonably affordable compared to what we were spending in the United States as well. So. After a couple of years, though, we just didn't want to leave. <laughs> I was just wondering if there was a rule in terms of buying real estate or property in Portugal, if you had to be there for X amount of years or pay a certain amount of taxes or anything like that. Yeah, not that I'm aware of. I mean, there is okay. a, there, like, when you, when you buy real estate here, there's a large one-time uh, transactional expense, but property taxes are very low. So, like, to give an example, we were probably paying about 11,000 in property taxes in Washington, D.C. Um, it's closer to about $184 per year here in wow. Lisbon. That is quite the, the, the difference.